<sighs> Isn't technology wonderful? Look what just showed up. Guys, somebody might have done me wrong. I'm going to catch him in a lie. Or maybe this is the perfect time to sit back and explore some medical technology that's been used for a long time in military and police applications. Let's think about that. Personal vendetta, technology, exploration, who cares? We're talking polygraphs coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have a fantastic device that just came in. Now this is a polygraph, which is, uh, you know, multiple graphs, polygraph. Well, it, it takes several different parameters, which anatomically you normally can't control under duress, and it maps those out. And through a series of questioning, you can actually detect what is most likely the truth and most likely not the truth based on those physiology, anatomical results. So this guy right here, this is the brains, this little guy right here. Now, mind you, there are three versions of this. This one here says this is the military edition. There's a police edition and then there's a standard um, regular commercial edition. So the, I don't know what the differences are and there probably isn't any other than the price, uh, to be honest. But Maybe, maybe I'll open this guy up and figure out what's inside it. Now, I think it's just some op amps that are in here and uh, maybe some comparator circuits. Hard to really say. Uh, obviously, the USB controller is also in here, but it, it's actually a pretty simple device. It's just got this little guy right here. This gives you a uh, green light. Yep, yep. And there are a series of sensors. Now, this one here looks like a standard SPO2 sensor. However, if you notice, there's no light. Now, if you guys remember back on your SPO2 video that you'll find in my Biomed Basics video, there are two wavelengths of light in that type of SPO2 sensor. However, this one here, I believe, only has infrared, which is why you can't see it. So it is working. So unlike the, the sensors that you'd see on a patient monitor, if you see no light, it's probably not working. This one here is, and it will graph out here on the computer. We'll get to that in a minute. So we have this sensor. We have galvanic sensors. Okay, so these ones here take a little button, kind of like ECG probes, and it's got an elastic band, and you put them on two different fingers. And between any two points in the body, you can take resistance measurements. Now, mind you, it's gonna be extremely high resistance, but there's going to be resistance measurements. And that is exactly what's probably going on here, which is that comparator circuit I talked about earlier. However, as the body goes under duress through either stress, through heat, or through lying, your body will perspirate. And one of the first places where it perspirates is gonna be your hands. You don't even realize it's happening, but it does. Your palms will start sweating before most other things. So we can take two sensors, place them on two fingers, and it will form a baseline, and as you proceed with your questioning, that resistance value will change if you're not being truthful, supposedly. Now, I, I suppose any one of these uh, three parameters you can control if you're a sociopath, <laughs> but most human beings cannot control all three parameters, and all three of them are kind of what tell the story of what's going on. Now, this one, is a fascinating sensor. It's a little bit different construction than what you see on the ones that the police use. This is like a load cell. You can see that spring loaded. And what this does is it measures your respiration rate. So it forms a baseline over your normal breathing patterns based on your uh, anatomy, physiology, and based on your nervousness. And as you breathe, this guy here will constrict and expand. And that is formed down here using a load cell down here on the poly chart. So let's go ahead and let's let's hook it up. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see if I can do this. As I hit myself 
in the face. Now the thing about this type of spring cell is that it has to be kind of tight. It has to be under a constant compression, which is not easy to do on yourself. Yep, see, it's not tight enough. So I've got to go a little bit tighter. <laughs> like that. Okay. So you can see a little bit of it coming out. And let's see, I got this guy. Now I really wish this guy here was maybe attached here or something, right? I really wish it was someplace because it just dingle hoppers around. I'll come up with a solution for that. I have here my heart rate sensor, which is actually going through the capillaries of my fingertips and it's measuring the amount of time the blood occludes and um, unoccludes the light path, okay? So um, as blood flows through the veins, it will absorb and, and allow light to pass, basically. Um, you know, and just for, for argument's sake, I'm gonna put these on different fingertips. And let's go ahead and switch over to the laptop so you guys can see a little bit more of what we're talking about. All right, there we go. Nice, I like this. Okay, so this is the laptop and you can see that uh, first thing you do is you set up a case. Stolen money, subject John Doe, and it is a male? Sure, why not, right? And um, now you would type in your questions. And the reason you're gonna type in the questions is because it's gonna have a pre-timed uh, series of destined questions where you're going to ask it and then there's a delay and that way there you can go back and you can examine the case after the fact so you can see exactly when a question was asked and you'll see we'll do it all right and let's see let's go i'm going to add a couple questions let's add that one and let's see this one here let's add that one and hmm i think that's probably pretty good enough right and it says interview subject on one one distracting uh one-on-one -on -one and non-distracting and neat surroundings. Yeah, definitely not here. Um, subject should face away from the examiner and the computer screen. Why? Because people can control your physiological responses if you see a trend. So if you see your heart rate speeding up, a lot of people can actually slow their heart rate down. There's many methods to do that. But normally you don't even feel your own heart, do you? So because you can't feel your own heart, you don't know that it's speeding up and it's gonna be all charted out and it's gonna expose you for the liar you are. Next. Uh, and it's telling me attach the breathing box around the abdomen of the subject with belt, pull string plug fully out a box and tighten belt. Oh, okay. So mine is not fully out. I guess I should probably do that, huh? Always follow instructions, right? Okay. So let's see, I'm gonna loosen this guy up. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay, my belt is a little twisted, like my life. Okay, so it's, it's saying to pull the spring all the way out. There we go. <clears throat> Much harder to do on yourself than you guys probably realize. So basically what they're talking about is they want this spring right here to come out quite a ways because as you breathe, it's going to, um, it's going to contract and that contraction is what it's measuring. All right, so um, it does give you a bad body language button and that is going to either mark some anomalies or it's going to maybe give you further criteria. Don't know. I don't have those anomalies. <laughs> so it says, uh, plug the USB cable in. We are, uh, if lightning struck me right now, I'm pretty sure I would be dead and gone because um, I'm all hooked up with these cables. Okay, so say and remain perfectly still, like I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm trying to remain perfectly still. You see those three lines that are going across the screen. Those are the three parameters that is going to be constantly monitoring. Now your pulse rate is gonna be the red, all right? That is the one that I said, you can't feel yourself, you can't control it. You can feel yourself perspirating. You can feel um, when you're breathing faster and slower, you can actually, that's the easiest one to control. However, uh, the one that's the hardest to control is going to be your heart rate. And that kind of says a lot, especially about nervousness. Now, however, 
sometimes when people get hooked up to devices like this, you automatically start getting nervous. So that's why there's three parameters and they all kind of tell the story, right? So it says, please remain perfectly still. All right, next. This polygraph examine will detect lies. And it will. It is important to answer each question truthfully. I'm gonna try. Answer each question truthfully with a yes or no answer. Have you ever told a lie? No. And you can see that there's a little timer right up here and it's at 22 seconds and it has to count down all the way to zero and then you can answer your next question. Now you can see my physiologic parameters, they're kind of come into their own. You see how my perspiration sensor, how it's coming down? That would be the green, that's your galvanic. It's these ones right here. And the heart rate is this one right here, that's the red, okay? The blue line down at the bottom, the blue, yeah, see that's, that's an anomaly, that one that just happened. <clears throat> Um, the blue line down at the bottom, that is your respiration rate. That one should normally stay pretty steady. Now, under real duress, like when you're trying to answer a question and you don't know how you're going to answer it, like in a lie, your respiration rate changes. And it's one of those things that people just, unless they're really trying hard not to do, it just happens, right? Because you kind of take an extra breath or so right before you answer. And you can see a little dip right there as I just manually did it. So, anyway, ignore the red, that blip, because that's because I moved my sensor around. I'm supposed to stay really still. It's really hard for me to do though. Ask me the next question. Have you ever lied to a loved one? Yes. I said I was going up to Dallas to go in and uh, do some work and I end up driving back a Corvette. <laughs> Not the most truthful thing out there, <laughs> but I got my car. So we're at 14 seconds, 13, it's analyzing me. There's a couple blips on the heart rate right there, but that's also because I'm moving my hand around. Normally when you do this kind of thing, the guy or girl, girls, uh, you shouldn't be moving around. Okay, you can see the galvanic coming down. It's, it's steadying out more and more. Have you ever felt sad? See, because I am the one answering these questions, it's, I'm not going to show any irregularities. Although you can see my heart rate jumping around a little bit right there. Have you ever felt sad? Nope. I am perfectly immune to being sad. Okay, we're at 22 seconds. So after answer, you answer all the control questions, that's when it goes into the real questions, the one that you typed in. You wanna get down to the brass tacks of why you're getting this, um, this test. So what it's gonna do is it's going to create a baseline for their normal response to answering questions. These are all easy questions that should not stress the, the candidate. So this way here, you can, uh, you know, figure out how they, they answer to being strapped up like this. And then you can start really getting on them. Have you ever betrayed someone who trusted you? Hmm. Yep. It happens. That's family, right? Ah, sometimes family, they don't even know the best thing for themselves. All right, we're at 14 seconds, clicking down. So you can see the chart behind my head there is doing its thing. Two, one. Boy, that's dark. <laughs> um, it says, have you ever fantasized about murder? Sure, why not? I, uh, I'll tell you. When I watch those uh, like murder movies, I always think like, this guy's an idiot. I could, I could definitely have done better. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I know it's dark, but if you think about it, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, writers who just have no clue how the human psyche really works. And I mean, I could definitely do it 
probably better than a lot of the writers in those TV shows and movies. All right, okay. So it's going to calculate the baselines right now. Boop. Now you ask him the serious questions. Did you lie to me today? Yes or no? No. Now these are the questions I added. That one and the next one. So you'll see. And by the way, this is not the most comfortable thing in the world. You got things strapped onto yourself and it's gonna show a blip because I'm moving around. And this, um, the strain gauge that's on my chest, it's, it does not feel that good. It's, it's like compressing your chest, but I mean, that's how it's gonna take your breathing measurements. Now, if you look at that blue line, you'll see the dips. Those dips are actually when I take a breath. And you can tell that I can talk for about 10 to 15 seconds after I take a breath and then I take a breath you see that, that line drop down, and then we go again. Um, and then, let's see, right here's the next one. It says, have you told me the complete truth since we've been talking? Yes or no? Now, here is where you can kind of catch some people. Sure. I've been 100% truthful. To you. Should hook my kids up to this. <laughs> Who ate all, all the, the Halloween candy? Who ate it? Somebody ate it. Who ate the Halloween candy? I see the bag, it's empty. Who did it? Used to be you could catch them because they would leave like a trail of empty wrappers and stuff. They're getting smart, it's getting harder. Maybe I'll hook them up and see what they can do on this guy. The machine has detected some irregularities. Hmm, I'm sure it has. Would you like to explain any of your answers? No, I'm pretty sure I've been explaining them as we go. The exam is now complete. Use the slider to review the exam. Okay, and that is technically the end of the exam. So what we can do from here, man, I really wish this guy had a buckle. <laughs> it's, I'm a buckle type of guy. I gotta rotate it around, release the strap. Oh yeah cumbersome okay and I'm gonna unplug the USB and what we can do from here is we can use the slider down here this little blue arrow and you can see at the top right up here it's going to show you the question and you can see the response right immediately below that so if it was a lie you would be seeing anomalies like the spike right here or you would see a ramp and incline which is when your heart rate starts speeding up. Again, heart rate is one of the one things, if you don't see it changing, you don't know what's happening. It's really hard to control. Perspiration. Now that is a direct physical response. Now there are some ways that you could dry your hands or whatnot, but with those things on, it's really hard to do that. So uh, again, that's one of the first indicators that you are stressing out is that your hands become clammy, you know, a little damp. That lowers the resistance, and that is going to change over here on the green line. So you can see my respiration rate. It's very regular, and it computed that. You can see the dips, and every dip, that's when I breathe, and I breathe. So if you were going to see things that would be irregularities, it'd be like that spike right there. That spike is kind of a dead giveaway. So have you ever felt sad? Well, I guess I'm a liar. It definitely shows right there that that is not a regular parameter. So normally you would see these lines be linear because your body is very stable. When your body becomes unstable, like you can kind of see right here. Now this is almost an unstable condition right here. So you can see on the left hand side there's some negative dips and then you see some scissor action. But it doesn't go up. Now, one of the reasons it won't go up is because I have, I have been around heart rate monitors for years. I know many techniques for staying calm, even though I don't do it so well all the time. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I've been around it, and I, as, since I can see a trend, I can actually take some extra breaths or so, like you can see in the blue line, to kind of slow my heart rate down. So anyway, that, in a nutshell, is a polygraph. So, what did we learn, guys and girls? 
You can use one of these if you think somebody betrayed you. You can give them a line of questioning, see what happens. Not saying that the results are going to be completely conclusive, but you never know, right? You never know. I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out. I'm just way too curious. What is going on inside this? This one here supposedly uses military grade electronics. I guarantee you that is marketing flub. It means absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly what I thought it was. There's just a couple little amplifiers in there and you have a USB controller. Mmm, nothing too big, huh? Military grade electronics. Oh man. Probably one of the best things you could do, though, is to probably seal this guy with uh, something like um, hot glue. And that would probably stabilize it if it was going to be like transported around a lot. Now, some of the things I do like about this guy, obviously, you've seen that it was mapping things correctly. There were very few artifacts. Means that it probably works, right? As far as I can tell, I I've hooked myself up several times. Uh, one time after I was carrying my youngest child around and uh, you could actually watch the trends in the heart rate and the perspiration. It does work. So one of the most important factors to a polygraph is going to be the questioner, the person that's doing the interrogation. You have to speak with a normal, calm voice. So it, it helps to be a disinterested party. If the person that you're questioning is the person that offended you, or did you wrong, you're probably not going to be the best person to ask the questions because it's really hard for humans to control themselves, especially when you can start to see leading trends here on the graph. Now, one of the things you are supposed to do when you see leading trends on the graph is you are supposed to let them know that, by the way, I do see, I detect that you're lying here. Would you like to clarify? and you can give them that chance to come open. Now, there's a very good chance that they're gonna stick with their story. Most human beings do. In which case, you take the evidence that you have and you take their body language and you try to come up with a gut solution. This, polygraphs are usually inadmissible for a reason because humans just naturally respond to being wired up like an animal and uh, it just doesn't go well. And it's one of those things that you can also fake. You can, you can cheat these tests, 100%. And with us being biomeds, the chance of us being able to cheat these tests are probably a little bit more than the average human being. The average human being doesn't understand how the galvanometer works, testing the resistance. Uh, it doesn't, they don't normally know that it's testing for sweaty palms. It doesn't know that you can regulate your breathing. That's the easiest thing for you to regulate. You can regulate your breathing and that helps control the situation. Now the, the heart rate, now people that have taken a lot of meditation classes and stuff, you can actually control your heart rate. I can, I can control my heart rate. I've been around heart rate monitors for years and I can control my heart rate down to around about 65 to 70 BPM. Now when I get really excitable, it gets really bad. Like when I think somebody did me wrong, my heart rate goes to the roof. I can't really control it. That's why I would probably not be the best person to ask the questions on this polygraph. However, it is what it is. It's an amazing piece of technology. It's very simple, but due to a laptop being the brains of the system, the software does all the work. You type in your questions and it keeps a very good record of what happened while you were asking a particular question. Very cool. So anyway, guys, that is polygraphs. It's technically a medical technology that has been used in police and military applications for 50 to 60 years, if not longer. It's been around for a minute, but now you can buy them on Amazon. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I'll leave a link in the video description down below. You can check them out. Maybe somebody did you wrong. Maybe you just want to hook up your kids, see who is eating all the damn candy and find out. Thanks for watching, guys.